Hello and welcome to a new episode of Tux Lives. Um, disclaimer, uh, this podcast is a journal of my learning Linux. I've only been using Linux for six months. So if you are seeking in-depth tutorials, if you are seeking answers to pressing questions, you've come to the wrong place. I'm sorry, <laughs> because I'm in the same boat you are. I'm just learning these things. So I hope you stick around anyway, because I think this show is getting better all the time. So secondly, this episode is the beginning of another trilogy. I just completed a trilogy of podcast episodes for my Mythologos podcast, the podcast of all things mythological. And those three uh, podcasts were all about my project Omniad. And you can watch those three episodes to find out what Omniad means and what the heck Omniad is. So I'm going to touch upon it on this in this episode, but only briefly. So second, uh, to explain this new trilogy, uh, the first episode, I'm going to introduce you to Groff, the Unix text command line text editor. And there's not much that I can show you because I'm like not even on level one yet, but I'm going to, we're going to create a document using Groff. In the next episode, I'm going to introduce you to Grep, the Unix command line search function, and we're going to grep the Groff document. In the third episode, I'm going to show you how to set up a machine with no GUI. Everything you're going to need from soup to nuts. If you have an old laptop or an old computer that you're not using and you'd really like to live in the command line, or at least try it, uh, I will show you what you have to do. And uh, that's been my favorite Linux project so far. And uh, I just spent hours and hours inside of there. So you're going to notice we're back in the Cinnamon desktop. And the reason for this is I messed up i3. I messed it up and I uninstalled it. And I'm going to reinstall it after doing more preparation. Uh, so I'm not going to go into any more detail. Uh, I tried a couple of things and I messed up the config and I couldn't fix it. And it was easier to just thoroughly wipe it from the system and read up and start over uh, than to keep trying to fix it. It was a long night. I got overly enthusiastic. <laughs> I really got, uh, I, re I really tried too much. Uh, lastly, people like to ask about my uh, desktop backgrounds. So what you're looking at here is an illustration by an Indian artist named Mukash Singh. And uh, this is from a book of concept art for a Grant Morrison comic book series called 18 Days, which is based on the Indian epic, the Mahabharata. Uh, the book, 18 Days, illustrated by Mukash Singh, is easy to find. The comic is difficult to find. Uh, I've never been able to collect all the issues, and I I'm not even sure if they finished it or what the status is. Uh, yeah, <laughs> good luck. But you can use your search engine of choice, mine being DuckDuckGo, and you can find uh, wonderful images by Mukash Singh uh, to put up on your background if you would like that. Decorate your desktop that way. So we're going to revisit... Um, Omniad briefly because it ties together. Everything is coming together. Eventually, this will be one podcast because all of these things are beginning to combine. So what I did was I need to access these files, the Omniad files. I need to access them through the command line. So they needed to all be in text format. And mixed results. I've tried this before and it, it's never successful and I tried it again and it wasn't successful. I got about 145 documents out of about 165 or 175 documents. Um, of the 145 documents, about 15 didn't come out. So here's the deal. Um, if you are, if you're a journalist or you're a published author, or you're doing documents for work for clients or as an independent contractor, you can make those documents and forget about them. Like you're never really gonna have to do much with them ever again anyway, and you can always get a fresh copy from uh, 
uh, your publisher or, you know, from a client or whatever. Um, this is not so if you're trying to access documents <laughs> that are almost 30 years old. And the problem here is the original documents, which are many are DOS word perfect and DOS MS word. Uh, many of them are trapped on diskettes and zip drives. So what I did at some point was I converted them to Word doc on like Microsoft 2000 or XP. And I found out it's not as simple as simply plugging in an external USB drive. Uh, I ain't getting nothing off of those disks. Uh, I think I actually need a formatted drive with Windows 98 or 2000 or XP on it and an original uh, disk drive or zip drive from that era because I tried everything. Uh, I mean, on and off for a year, I tried everything and there's no getting them off of there. Um, and the converters have a problem converting the doc files that were converted from WordPerfect and MS-DOS. So I need these files to be accessible from the command line because I'm doing, I'm building up a command line workflow on this project and they have to be text files. Um, they'll read a PS file. Um, you know, there are some funky formats, but uh, I also need to do, you know, some work in the GUI as well. Uh, so the text file format is the best uh, format for this. And uh, yeah, it's a mess. When I, but when I finish this, uh, I can start all over. I was explaining in the last uh, thing that I posted, the last episode of Mythologos, what a mess this was. But here's a chance to start fresh. I can start all over again and make this neat and orderly. Um, so that's that. And I'm going to show you why the Unix utilities are going to be so useful uh, in the next couple of episodes. So let's get into this. And there's not much that I can do on Groth yet, but I'm just going to show you how to make a basic document in Groth. So we're going to evoke Groth. And if you want a particular uh, set of fonts. So we're, we're going to be using the Latin fonts and that's everything that's in your GUI word processors font cache it are all the Latin letters. So T for text and Latin one for the font set. Now we're going to show where all this is going to and we're going to uh, name the document. We're going to call this Groff Grep and we're going to save it as a text document. Enter. We're in Groth. So let's just say Groth, uh, Grok was a concept introduced um, So Grok was a concept introduced in the science fiction novel Stranger in a Strange Land. Uh, to Grok means to uh, profoundly understand something. Ooh, my typing's all over the place here. I must have read that book. 10 times in the 1980s. Looking back, I wouldn't say it was that great, but at the time it blew my mind. Uh, I guess I could say I grokked it back then, but now not so much. Okay, so there's our document and we're gonna do control D to get out. There we are. 
overdid it. <laughs> All right, here we are. By the way, I'm now using Z, uh, Z, H, Z, Z, S, H, uh, in the terminal, and I really like it. Uh, but let's just open this and see what we've got. Ah, uh, and get out of here. And look, uh, there we have our document. So those are the very basics of Grok. I'm going to clean this up. I'm going to get out of here and clean that up. So as I said, I am new at this stuff. Um, honestly, when I get into a groove on the GUI less machine, I'm much. Uh, I'm getting pretty damn good. I'm getting some facility, but doing all these things at once uh, and having to focus on all these things at once, it's showing. It's really bringing out my rawness, my lack of experience. But um. When you combine Groff with something like LaTeX or there are preset macros that you can use. There's uh, the man page uh, macro and then there's like a regular document or a letter or a scientific document. But with Groff, you can set all the parameters. We're talking headers, footers, page numbers, margins. Uh, changes in font, you can insert images, you can resize images, you can position images, the same thing with charts. You can do everything you can do in a GUI word processor, but why here? What's the advantage here? Doing it this way, you make a document that what, when you're using your GUI word processor, the page is filled with text that you can't see. It's formatting it for you. You're clicking a button, but the formatting information still has to be there or it can't be read. And I ran into this when I printed my novel Carrot Field uh, when I had to do it myself. And I kept not being able to load that damn document uh, to the print on demand. And I, I stripped it of, uh, of the formatting so many times, I can't even remember how I finally fixed that and made it work. But uh, this gets you out of those formatting jams. Uh, if you do it correctly, a uh, document do done this way, you can open it 30, 40, 50 years from now. Now, if it's stuck on a spinning hard drive or an ancient SSD, that might, that might be an issue. But if you can get it off, you can open it and it, it will have its full functionality, which is not true of some of these ancient documents that I have, where uh, I may change formatting things and then if I transfer the document, the formatting doesn't transfer. And I don't know all the ins and outs of that. I don't know exactly why that is. But there's all this junk, and this gets rid of it. Um, you are getting a truly clean, universal document. Um, so I love this. I want to learn how to use this. I much prefer doing it this way than using a Nano or something like that. Uh, you know, it... Some people say, like, you don't want to do a long document in Groff, but then I see examples of long, complicated documents done in Groff. I love the convenience of never having to leave the command line myself. And if you want to read up, you can uh, man Groff, or you can info Groff. <laughs> and there are entire websites devoted to Groff. There's not much on YouTube, but I got to be honest, I'm not finding these YouTube tutorials very helpful. Um, I'm finding man pages and info pages and documentation and well-stocked websites helpful. Uh, but there you go. That is, I can't even say those are the basics of Groff. <laughs> those are barely the fundamentals of Groff by someone who barely has the fundamentals mastered. But we have our document. We have our document, and uh, then we're going now. Next up, we're going to grep our document. So I hope you enjoyed watching that, and uh, I'll be back soon with another episode. And uh, until then, good luck to you.